Hello, everyone. Today we have a very special interview with Patrick, a Facebook marketplace dropshipper who's had a lot of good success recently. And for those who don't know, the Facebook marketplace is a great place for dropshippers today because it's still an untapped marketplace, lots of profit to be had, and it's actually really easy to sell there. So let's begin. Hello, Patrick. Thanks for being here today. How are you? Hey, thank you for inviting me. It's it's. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you live, and what you do for a living. I'm originally from Poland, but I I, I currently live in Los Angeles in United States. And um, what I do for a living, uh, I, I work in marketing and real estate marketing. But I discovered uh, dropshipping last year eBay dropshipping and then Facebook dropshipping. And that's what I'm doing kind of like on the side. Hopefully maybe this will turn into like a bigger business, but that's, that's what I do. And I also have a YouTube channel as well uh, about dropshipping, but yeah. um, I would say that my, my, my day job is the, the marketing thing. And then dropshipping is like a hobby side hustle. Okay. So you're working in marketing as a full-time job and you got your dropshipping as something that you're doing kind of as a side hustle to see, you know, you know, check out the the territory, see how it goes for you and see if maybe one day you can turn it into your full-time income. I feel like I could make it a full-time income right now because uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. You know, uh, however, my job pays well too. So uh, I, I keep both options open, you know, uh, but yeah, um, my, yeah, my I, I know what you mean. Is, yeah, my, my drop shipping is on a pretty good level. I could probably ease off of it, leave uh, leave out, off of it. But um, yeah, I, I keep both op- options open. Yeah, from experience, what most people do is uh, those that were able to to hit it as a full time uh, job. Once you're making almost equal to what you're making on your full time job, then it's a good time to maybe think about making that switch because usually at that point, you know you can really start to scale your online business even three times or four times more than what it was. But that's that, that's something that I've seen that people have been doing. So I, I hope you make it to that stage. Um, so my next question was, when did you discover dropshipping? But you just said that it was uh, last year. Yeah, well, so is that just Facebook Marketplace dropshipping or other selling platforms too? To be honest with you, I I, I knew about what the, the dropshipping itself, I knew for few years. I, I've done Shopify dropshipping in the past. I've tried all their sign, online businesses in the past. So I know I knew about dropshipping for a long time, but the specific dropshipping that I'm talking about here is the retail dropshipping, which I assume, like I'm, I'm sure you're doing it, or at least you've done it in the past. So I discovered retail dropshipping last year and I discovered the eBay dropshipping first. So, you know, I was browsing my, my, my Instagram feed and I saw someone posting something about eBay dropshipping. And then the next thing I know, I'm on YouTube watching millions of videos talking about it. You know, I started doing it. I, I put some random items. I went to walmart.com, put some items on eBay. And within like a few days, I sold one or two items. I sold with the loss. I lost money on it, but that's because I didn't... Um, really know how to calculate right. your break even correctly and your profits yes exactly yes yes <laughs> that was that was that was the, the the case but you know once you learn everything and then you try um try out and you discover what works what not what are the prices and and you you, you keep going and yep. facebook oh and F- facebook drop shipping this is something more recent i would say i started uh this year i think i started in january 2021 so or maybe a little bit earlier than that maybe like december because i remember Mm -hmm. i was selling stuff for christmas so i would say december i think that's that's the time i started and yeah facebook has been really really great this is what i focus most of my time right now it's 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 most of the time i spend on facebook not ebay per se but i have my ebay open but Facebook is is really great, and this is where I spend most of my time right now. Nice, and uh, I'm personally, I've personally been drop shipping for the last, uh, I think, five years now. I'm still doing it up until today, but today it's pretty much like ninety percent on automation. Uh, that's one of the things that I like about it the most. Facebook is not fully automated yet. We're gonna get. I want to talk about that in a couple of minutes. But uh, on my eBay account, it's you know, it's 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 automated. It's pretty much running by itself. 
Um, I only spend, I think maybe it tops an hour a day, but that's after, you know, you build up the base and, and it's already working and you've got a lot of feedbacks and, you know, you got a good customer base and it's pretty much running by itself at that point. I do believe that we're going to get to that uh, with Facebook too. Uh, as you said, it's a very good uh, platform. You've started on December, which is, uh, yeah. So in the last six months, a lot of dropshippers has, have started figuring out, uh, you know, about the Facebook marketplace. It's still very, very unsaturated. A lot of people have still not joined yet. Uh, so anyone who still joins today is really enjoying, you know, the fruits. Another question I wanted to ask is uh, if you're doing it as, as a side hustle or if it's your main source of income today, but I know that it's a side hustle. Um, like I said, I know that you're, you know, you're doing a good job at it so far. I hope that you will be able to turn it into a, a full source of income soon, but, uh, I, and also I, your I YouTube channel. My problem is, yeah, sorry. My, I think my problem is, um, I'm like mentally not ready to, to fully switch, you know? Um, yeah, I, I have a lot of bills to pay and, and yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, I'm still learning about like. VA process. I, I I hire a few guys from like Fiverr to to help me with drop shipping to do product research, etc. I'm not fully automated. Yep. This is that this is something that I I struggle with, like to it, find. Yeah, it, it, it will it will come switch. in time. Yeah, I'm sure that it's something that will come in time. I've seen it happen to quite a few drop shippers. Um, to me also, I could say, but, uh, it, it is something that takes time. And, you know, s for some people, it's not the perfect fit. Some people like having their day jobs and having it as, as a side hustle. And quite a lot of people have also, you know, turned it into their, um, main source of income, which is actually also nice. Uh, you know, we each have our own stories and, you know, uh, our ways of, uh, of, uh, dealing with things. Uh, people who usually have, uh, you know, families or people with lots of expenses, lots of bills, usually think twice before, you know, taking a, a risk, uh, this kind of a risk. But uh, you know what happens with people who also know how to take risks uh, in this life. These are usually also the people That's that uh, uh, become uh, huge and successful, but you also have the other side. So I always think positive, think ahead and, you know, see what's right for you. So another question yeah. I wanted to ask was, what actually brought you to Facebook Marketplace dropshipping? You started with, I mean, you already have experience with eBay. You have experience with uh, Shopify. And now you know that it's going to be all about Facebook Marketplace dropshipping. And I'm guessing you put the other two things aside. So what actually brought you to this is what you should be doing. Facebook. This is the right platform. When you do eBay dropshipping, Facebook is not that different. There, there are a few differences. Like for example, people are nicer on Facebook because I think they see your face, and I, I think the customers, they, they are, mm -hmm. yeah, the customers are, are mm -hmm. nicer to you. So I think that's one of the factors. Uh, but the process of like finding items, listing items is kind of similar. So if you're doing eBay or Amazon, I, I never tried Amazon, but I would assume it's 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 going to be similar. It's kind of similar process. Then Amazon is, is one of my different. favorites. Yeah. Really? I, yeah. I, I never touched Amazon. I, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, yeah, people are weary about them because um, retail and all of that. But, uh, you know, if it works, it works. And it's been working for years. But yeah, go ahead. How, how long you've been doing it? How long, uh, how been doing it? For, for as long as I've been dropshipping, four or five years. They've wow. been my okay. one of my main. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I should, I should tap the market too. Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. So, but, so what, what actually is... But, you're talking about the people being nicer, right? But what made you want to still stay only on the Facebook marketplace? What made you decide that right. this is so, the one that uh, yeah. you should be spending your time on? I, I was going to that. So uh, mm -hmm. I, when I started, I wasn't expecting to, to switch, to fully switch, or maybe not fully switch because I still do eBay, but like focus majority of my time on Facebook. When I started, I, I just put a few items and I want to see, you know, if they're sell. And I did sell them. But what really attracts me is when I see the fees. So, you know, on, on eBay, I pay about, I don't know, I think like it's 18, 19% of fees. Uh, everything put together. That. Yeah. If you're, if you're taking eBay's final value fees and PayPal's fees and um, uh, the tax that you're paying your source exactly. when you're buying the product. Yeah. You're getting to 20% easy break even. 
Right. So on <laughs> Facebook, I go on Facebook, I only see 5%. 5%. That's right. You know, and, and, and then there's a lot of people that, um, it's just, it's, I call it like a wild, wild west because it's still like a new platform to dropship. Uncharted so territory. Of, mm -hmm. Yeah. There's not much competition, low fees. I see way higher profit margins compared to like eBay. I decided that was an easy decision. I'm just going to focus most of my time on Facebook now since it's, uh, it's, just, it's just better. You know, there's just, the, the, you can make more money out on it. So we got lower fees. We got a much higher chance of selling because not a lot of people are selling uh, on the Facebook. I mean, a lot of people are selling, but not a lot of people are drop shipping on the Facebook marketplace. Uh, exactly. So yeah, two big reasons why, you know, people need to join. And it's one of the things that I've been, uh, product research is one of the things that really amazes me on the Facebook marketplace because you really don't need to know so much about product research. Not like you need to know on eBay or Shopify where you, it, you know, it's really like hardcore you have to know exactly what you're right. selling. You know that it fits the market. You tested out so many things before until you find those ones that start selling. So it's not like that on the Facebook marketplace. Those are the reasons that brought you to the Facebook marketplace. And that makes sense. That's one of the biggest advantages that we really have there. So we know yes. what brought you to it. How did you actually learn about it? Like, how did you know that it exists? I think I just watched YouTube and, um, I, 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 I found it, you know, I also, so, yeah. So it came from I YouTube also, videos. Like you didn't, you didn't just think about it one day. Hey, maybe I should try just like I've been doing on eBay and Shopify. Why don't I try it on the Facebook marketplace? I, 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 I spoke to one of the big drop shippers on YouTube. He kind of convinced me to start doing it. So, and then I just watch you after that, after this conversation, I just watch YouTube videos and that's how I learn. And I tried out. Yeah, most most of the things I, I learned from from YouTube. I also took the like a Facebook, uh, not Facebook, um, e eBay dropshipping course. So um, I learned from that as well. So was it helpful? Because there's so many yes. courses out there. Yeah, it was it was very helpful. It, it helped a lot. Um, I learned a lot from it. It, it was very 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 uh, useful. For free um, or did you pay? No, no, no. It was paid. Yeah, I, I paid for it. It okay. wasn't yours because I think you guys have one too, right? Sorry, it wasn't yours. Yeah, I, <laughs> I believe that everyone needs to learn how to do it from someone who's actually doing it and successful at it and not just people who are good at teaching but haven't actually done it uh, because there's a lot of those too. Uh, so it's always good to learn from someone who's actually doing it and preferably from someone who's still doing it, not someone who quit because, you know, they did it, they quit because they weren't successful, but now they know how to teach. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's yeah, always good to learn from the right sources. Yes. And then the price doesn't matter as long as you're learning from the right source. For me, it was just enough to learn the basics and from there, you know, how to create the account, how to link this with that and how to not get suspended. And from there, it's like, it, it's yours. My, my biggest okay. problem that I, I, it helped me when I took that course was like taxes. That was one big thing in customer service. And you, you mean research. taxes that you have to pay to your country, like income taxes or taxes that you have to pay when buying the product from your source? I'm talking about sales tax and, and yeah, like the income tax mm, as well. Right. Sales tax but, too. Right. Those are all questions that a lot of uh, beginners have when starting on, you know, drop shipping, even on the Facebook marketplace and also on other selling channels. Uh, so we can just clear the, air, uh, clear the air really quick. When you're a drop shipper and you're buying a product from your supplier, you will pay taxes. Most likely you will pay taxes when you're purchasing the product. So you're going to pay $20 plus, let's say one, $2 tax. Right. And when a sale is made on eBay, uh, for example, I'm not sure about Facebook. You can, uh, you can correct me now, but I know that eBay also collects a sales tax when I the customer pays you. So the customer is paying you also the sales tax and eBay deducts it from you, the seller. So you see it coming in and you see it going out. You have no control over it. So you paid the supplier tax, the buyer paid you tax, which eBay would deduct it from you. And you have to pay your own income tax from the country that you reside in. You need to check with your local. Um, I'm talking basically now to, to our viewers, not to you specifically. But anyone who's dropshipping needs to know that how you need to pay, if you need to pay, and how much you need to pay when it comes to, to income tax. It's no problem. I'm doing it. And 
you know, tens of thousands of people yeah, are doing it. Go to your accountant and talk to them. Yeah, that's it. You just need an accountant, you know, hire someone, pay him once a month, send them your income and outcome, uh, um, uh, you know, files, and they'll do the rest of the work for you. Uh, that's one thing that you should yeah. do when you start drop shipping. But besides that, don't worry about taxes. It's all being paid for when you're buying and when you're selling. Yeah, I, I feel like when you're starting out, just start out. Don't don't don't, don't overthinking. Don't think about taxes. You know, right. no. like, uh, but you didn't you do need to know your break even. I mean, people shouldn't start without knowing how much, you know, how much fees they're gonna pay and how much they can pro- profit from this product. So they won't make the mistake of losing on their first few orders, you know, like you had. And I also remember having a few of those scenarios in the beginning. Exactly. Um, yes. Yeah. You've been drop shipping on Facebook uh, marketplace for how long now? Since January. Six so months. it's about uh, March, April, May. So it's, it's about five, uh, maybe, maybe even six months now. Yeah. And what, uh, out of those, uh, out of that half a year, what struggles do you remember having? What difficulties, uh, what blocks did you have on the road along the way? The same problems uh, that I had on eBay, which is product research. That's the big one, finding items that sell and customer service. I think those are the only two obstacles that really, really matter. I know some people struggle with like having, um, like some people don't have the, the shipping option unlocked. That was the case for me for a little bit. I was waiting a long time to finally get approved. But once I get my one account approved, I get my second account approved as well. And, and they get the shipping option unlocked. But uh, once you pass that time that the Facebook that finally gives you the, the shipping option unlocked, I guess uh, finding items and, and, and the customer service handling people, but people are nicer on Facebook. So that compared to like eBay, for example. So yeah, and like you said, it makes sense because when they do see your face, then they don't look at you like um, just like some business who doesn't care, you know, exactly. about, about its uh, people. They see a real person. So it's like a real human being. And the interaction all of a sudden, you know, becomes uh, nicer, more polite. Yes. Uh, but I want to stop you right there because you talked a little bit about shipping options. And it's one of the questions that I wanted to ask later on. So we're just going to talk about it now. Okay. The shipping options is a problem for many, many people who want to drop ship on the Facebook marketplace. And I have noticed that a lot of people have been having this problem. Uh, so here, I also want to clear the air a little bit. Right now, at this point, from what I have noticed, Facebook does not allow, they don't enable the shipping option for people who are living outside the US and not just, but for now, people living outside the US, if you're logging into Facebook from a non-US IP or, or if you are logging in from a US IP, but the Facebook account was created, not when you were in the US or if you're not residing in the US and you don't have an old uh, aged Facebook account, uh, which was created in the in the US, you won't get shipping options. So Facebook will only give you an option to show your 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 item to one specific uh, city or state, and then a small radius on top of that. And if you're only going to get one state out of uh, fifty, um, then you know not many people are going to see your product, and you're not going to be able to sell much. In the beginning, when you didn't see the shipping options, and you do, and you are living in the US, you're from LA, the Facebook account was created from the US but you still didn't see the shipping options in the beginning, right? Yes. Okay. And how old is your Facebook account? Very old. The, my, so, my main account, it's, it's probably like 10, 11 years. So that's, that's, that's age. So what did you actually do to see the shipping options to have it enabled? Well, I, before I started doing Facebook drop shipping, I was selling locally. I was, uh, there was like another side hustle, I guess. I was selling items from um, like around the house. And I also was, I was ordering a lot of items in bulk from, from like a warehouse. And I was oh. selling them to the local uh, community to like to basically to people that live in a city. And I mean, I think that helped too, because that helped me to get more, uh, what is it called? Feedback, and, reputation, you know, yeah. like the, uh, yeah. so because so people are actually that. also giving you feedback as a seller on Facebook and then they can see your seller feedback. Yes. So selling locally might have helped me. I'm not really sure. I know that a lot of people say that that that, that does help. So maybe it did help me. Um, but did you yeah, do anything? Any action? Any, any trigger so that uh, gave you the shipping options? Yeah, I, I think it did. Uh, it took me a while. 
it took few months to to of selling on 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 the market locally but eventually i did get this option on that so it just happened it just happened all of a sudden you didn't reach out to facebook or anything no yeah but however i have a second account which is also aged it's about like six years old this account and i didn't sell on it before this account get the optional has the shipping option yeah right so yeah right so that's another thing uh, there's it, we can't really find out find out exactly what the trigger is and why some people have it why some people don't but if you do live in the US and you don't have the shipping options you can also try just reaching out to Facebook tell them that you wanna uh, that you're actually able to ship your your products to any one of the 50 states and they'll open that option for you uh, some accounts will automatically have it and some accounts won't have it and in time they will have it like the exam- like the example that we just heard um, so yeah, so that's another thing that I wanted to talk about because that's another big issue that people are having. Why don't I have the shipping option and what can I do to, to see it? Uh, so we talked about, uh, some of the difficulties that you had, you talked about also about product research and customer service. So let's talk about that a little bit when it comes to product research. How do you, how, how I mean, how is it for you on the Facebook marketplace and how do you compare it to product research on your other methods, on the other methods, on the other selling channels that you try to sell on? Uh, eBay and Shopify. Okay, so with eBay, for example, there's a lot of tools and there are specific methods to it because it's. I think it's easier to find products. You can. Um, there's a bunch of softwares that you can use. I use one to do it to to like help me with product research. is very useful. You can also try to look up other dropshippers. You can find other dropshippers, but just Typing like finding one item on Walmart, for example, and then put it on eBay. You right. Eventually, find a dropshipper, and then you can see what items he's selling and and just right. trying to copy. And if and if he's selling it for a profit, and if he is, then you know that you can get more products from him. But this is different from the Facebook Marketplace because we can't uh, really find other dropshippers and see you know That's their true. success because it just doesn't really exist yet. But you That's are true. still more successful at your at uh, you know drop shipping on the facebook marketplace then uh, or or it's easier selling on the facebook marketplace than it is on other selling channels so um, right but what i do for example if, if i apply kind of the same rule from ebay to facebook i just look up for drop shippers on ebay and then i see what the items they're selling if they're selling eBay as then my sell on Facebook. So I just okay. go on Facebook and try to do it. Okay, nice. So instead of, uh, so the product research method is the same for you. You're doing the same thing that you did on eBay, except only now when you're listing the item, you're not listing it on eBay. You're just listing it on Facebook, but the method, Correct. the product research method is the same. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's also a nice uh, method. I didn't think it, about I, that. What I've noticed with Facebook, it's it's hit and miss. Like it, some items that sell like crazy on eBay doesn't necessarily mean they will sell really good on, on Facebook. Facebook. Right. Yeah, it's it's I don't really understand how the algorithm works. It's it's also I've noticed sometimes I can list the same item twice. And one time I get like almost 100 views within the first hour and then uh I I list this I, the same exact item like say the next day or something and in the same category, views. in the same category? Same category, same pictures, same same everything. And and um yeah, I'm not sure how it exactly works. I feel like within the first hours, they're just trying to push it to as many people as they can so they can yeah, figure out. But, right, so, and, and eBay does the same. But if you did it with a second product, then it should have happened there too. So that's uh, so there's probably an algorithm thing going on there, just like uh, just like you suggested. And it's the same thing also for eBay. You can you can import the same product, you know, in different variations, different colors, and and you know one color is like really hitting it off and the rest of them is like nothing so it's like either this color is really 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 special or there's an algorithm thing going on here where you know it's it's random and you can't really you can't really put your finger on it yes um one thing that i could uh, give as a tip here is uh, as you can see not every product that sells on ebay sells on facebook but the 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 product research method that you're using still works you can also try things that are a lot more basic because not a lot of dropshippers are on Facebook right now. So you can try leaving eBay on the side, leave eBay for eBay. And when it comes to Facebook, just look for uh, search for products that are simply selling. Well, you know, bestsellers on Walmart, bestsellers on Amazon, just take products from their bestsellers because those are, those are products that have been proven to work. 
and uh, at least for that selling platform, right? For that, for that supplier or whatever. But that's something that's been working for us on our, on our stores that we're running with our VAs. Um, so that's another method, and it's a lot more simple. You know, it's like, it okay, is. this product is selling well. Let's try it. This product is selling well. Let's try it. And like you said, it's a hit and miss. But maybe you'll spend less time on product research this way and more time optimizing, analyzing, and you know, scaling forward. So your your main product research method is, uh, like you said, seeing what's going on in eBay and trying to convert that to the Facebook audience to, I mean, to get them to convert from Facebook. It's I, I do the same thing that you just described too. I, I I just go on Walmart, for example, and just pick the best sellers. That works as well. I I. I mix the methods, you know. Oh, okay. I, when, when I that's when, the best. Sometimes when I run all the items on Walmart, the best sellers, I have to figure out what else would sell. So I go on eBay and try to find all the dropshippers. Yeah. But I use yeah. both methods. And uh, uh, and and how many suppliers do you try to work with? How many Walmart. suppliers do you mix in? I just I just use Walmart. Only Walmart. I, I, I yeah I try different. I I I use cost Costway. Uh, I try Home Depot, but I just keep it to Walmart. Uh, hmm. I don't know. It's it makes stuff simpler and easier. So I know a lot of people who are working uh, um, with Walmart. Uh, I've tried them out. Not not so much. Obviously, not as much as you. But I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend to to add more suppliers to that list. Uh, you're already having success with one supplier, uh, you know, and you will definitely have with more. I'm sure of that. When it comes to Home Depot, that's a very specific niche for the home niche. So I'm not so sure about that, but mm, uh, try adding in more suppliers. I'm sure that you will see uh, the results there. I know that you're used to Walmart, but sometimes you can um, you can get stuck. For example, uh, like you said, you know, you run out of a, a good selling product and you want more. So that's another reason where you know you can actually find it through uh, other suppliers. But I'm not talking about suppliers like AliExpress uh, for Facebook. Marketplace dropshipping, that's something that doesn't work. And that's because Facebook wants you to ship out your product within uh, two days. Correct me if I'm mistaken. Uh, two or three, yeah. Two or three. Pretty, and pretty you need fast, to... basically. Right. And you, we can't get that from Chinese suppliers. And even, even when we know today that AliExpress has warehouses in the US, they still usually do not. Uh, sometimes they do, but most of the time they won't provide a tracking number within the first uh, three days. And, you know, and then, you know, the customers will start asking what's going on and they can leave you a bad review when Facebook sends a survey uh, after your customers buy from you. And, you know, that, that those are some really risky things that can really get your Facebook marketplace account suspended uh, or put on hold. So one thing that we do need to keep in mind is suppliers with fast shipping times. Uh, yes. And I'm sure that Walmart, uh, you know, I, I see that they have two day deliveries for most of their products. So. That's something that's, uh, it's not a problem there. What is your, I, I know that it's only been half a year, but I know that you are successful. I know that you're hitting those sales and profits. Um, what is your average monthly revenue, you know, on an average number, you don't have to be really exact uh, that you're making from so Facebook example, marketplace dropshipping, but also yeah. compared to eBay and Shopify. I don't make much money on, on eBay these days. I used to, but since I switched most of my time to, to Facebook, this is where I get most of my income. Yeah, but, but when you did um, use to drop ship there. Right. When so my last month in April, I, I made three thousand dollars from both. Um and then in revenue, right? Taxes, in revenue after fees, after you know after everything. Oh, so in profit. Then, right, yeah, just profit. Uh, so, uh, but I would say, I think like 2,500 was, was basically Facebook and then maybe even more, to be honest with you. I don't remember, but Mo uh, yeah. So most of the meat is coming from Facebook. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where I, where I focus most of my time. Uh, this month is not going that well <laughs> because I, 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 I didn't spend that much time on product research. I focus on a little bit different things. I, I relax a little bit more, but again, I, you know, I'm trying slowly to get VAs to do this hard job for me. So hopefully um, I'll be able to scale it up. But yeah, yeah. Uh, last month, April was pretty good for me. And uh, most of the income came from Facebook. 
Quite very nice. And did you ever have any trouble with um, Facebook transferring funds to your bank account, which happens no. uh, a few days after the customers uh, receive their products? Everything always went through successfully. There were any, uh, never any problems. No, I, I never get any problems. I mean, Facebook has this thing that I believe they deliver funds within four business days. Or Something like that, yeah. Sure, I'm not sure. Uh, after the customer d- d- um, received the actual product. Right. The But sometimes, you know, let's say um, I don't have a tracking number time because sometimes I don't, don't, the supplier doesn't give the tracking number or time and I have to... Right. And Facebook uh, so supports I, FedEx, UPS, and USPS, only those three shipping options. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's that's another thing. Yeah, they, they, they don't support like one track or laser ship or anything like that. So when you have a, when you don't have a tracking number on time or when you have to, when you get a tracking number from like those different uh, shipping uh, mm-hmm. companies, suppliers, mm-hmm. I have to put like a, like a fake tracking number or like find, or I use a different tracking number from a different product and then just put it in. So right. when that happens, you can wait longer for the funds. It takes like 21, day, 21 days to get your funds. Okay. You will get yep. them, but it's just a longer period of time to, right. to, to get it. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, you just need to know that it's going to take a little bit longer than right. usual. Right. So I'll, I'll explain why this happens. When you're using either UPS, USPS, or FedEx, then Facebook can actually be able, Facebook can track the progress and they can see that it got delivered to the buyer. And within a few days, the money will be in your bank account. But when you're using a fake tracking number, or if you're just marking it as shipped, uh, but you know, it didn't actually, nothing actually shipped out. And simply enough, they cannot track it using the tracking number that you gave. Then they're just going to wait 20, something like that, 21 days. And then they'll release the funds to your account as long as the customer didn't open a case that they didn't receive the item or something like that. And that's how Facebook uh, keeps themselves uh, safe too. So uh, it makes sense. And we're happy to know that both ways work that, you know, if you don't upload a tracking number, then I don't know, something bad will happen to your account. Everything will be okay as long as your customers are receiving, receiving their products and, you know, and they're happy about it. The product is as, you know, as described, arrived uh, within the right time, but you know, we don't want to take any risks. I mean, we should definitely supply those tracking numbers and try to even work with suppliers who can give us those UPS, USPS, and FedEx uh, tracking numbers if we can. Uh, it's only going to make our jobs that much easier. Okay, so we talked about some of the struggles. Uh, we talked about the suppliers uh, that you're working with. Um, how many listings do you have today on your Facebook Marketplace account? About 300. 300, okay. So that's nice. That's a good number. And how many sales per day do you have with 300 listings? Uh, 15, on average, it's never the 15, same, but on average, 15. 15. And what is the profit margin for each product that you are uh, adding? Oh, oh, oh you, you're talking percentage wise? Yeah, That's percentage wise. Yeah. Percentage wise, I would say it's 25%. That's the average. Okay. Uh, dollar wise, it depends on the item because I sell items that some items are like high, high end tickets. So they cost like $200 and some of them cost like, uh, I don't know, 20 bucks. So the thing with, with the high end items is like usually the, 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 the pro- percentage wise, the profit margins are lower, but dollar wise, they're higher. And uh, the opposite with the right. cheaper items right. with lower you, price you tags. Can, yeah. It's you, you, you you can you can sell it with uh, with the higher um, average percentage wise, but usually you get just le- less dollars. Smaller dollar item. amount at the end of the day. Yeah, in your pocket. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I definitely know. I'm definitely familiar with that. Uh, so, are you actually working with a like when you're when you're thinking how much you want to profit from a, an item that you're selling? Are you thinking of it percentage wise, or are you just thinking fixed dollar amount? I'm just looking for item that will sell. And I don't really care how much I, I try. I tend to stay on the higher end. I tend to look for high end items because you just get more money, more profit per sale. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I, I really don't think about it. I just, I just try to find an item that will actually sell. That's okay. The, that's the main goal. So, you know, you got your 5% and you know, you know that you're going to sell it for a much higher price than that. And 
So yeah. you, you you don't you don't with this method you can't really know like at the end of the day uh, unless you're keeping some kind of uh, Excel sheet or something like that to know exactly how much you're profiting. You're just seeing you know what's coming into your bank account uh, unless like I said you have some uh, Excel followers or something that's you know uh, showing you exactly how much you're profiting at the end of the day. Otherwise it's pretty much hard to tell. That's that's something that I feel like a lot of beginners struggle with and have right. problems. And that's like my biggest tip, start tracking your profits from the day one. Like it's it's going to help you for multiple reasons. You're going to know how much money you're making. You're going to know if you're losing money. You're going to help you with taxes. You're going to keep track of the profits for tax purposes. Right. So definitely start tracking that from the day one, make like a simple spreadsheet on Excel or, or uh, you know, use some software to do it. It definitely start doing it from the day one. Yep, for sure. I can definitely vouch for that tip. What about order fulfillment? Let's talk about that really quick. H- how are you fulfilling the orders that are coming in? So you you get an email or you get a message from Facebook, uh, an item sold, boom, what's the next step? I try to do it right away if I can. Sometimes I can't. Sometimes, you know, I'm out or something or doing uh, other stuff. But I try to do it as soon as I can. On the weekends, um, I just check like once, twice a twice a day, just to see how it goes, and then do it, you know, within that time frame. But during like the weekdays, I try to do it as soon as I can because I I usually spend a lot of time in front of the, in front of the computer, so I might as well just fill out the the order, you know. Yeah. Uh, it gets hideous. It gets really. Uh, it can get you know, time consuming. So if I get a lot of orders, I usually just wait till the end of the day. But um, if I don't get that many orders, I just try to do it as soon as I can. Yeah. And that reminds me of my dropshipping journey about two years back, I think before I began with automation and I knew that it existed, but I didn't, I I just, uh, you know, I was having like a hard time knowing who to trust and what to trust and, Right now I'm controlling everything and I like it this way, even though I'm very limited and I cannot, you know, scale much, especially when you start hitting 15, 10, 15 cells a day and up, it really starts to become time consuming. Like, uh, like you just explained it and yeah. then you're trying to think, okay, I need to find a time today to just take care of all these orders. So usually you leave it to the end because maybe you'll get some more orders and then you have to fulfill them again. So you wait till like eight, nine, 10 PM, fulfill the orders, watch TV and go to sleep. But, uh, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember going through the same thing, you know, on, uh, not on Facebook marketplace, but we're going to get to automation too, in just about a minute. Um, what about, well, we talked about updating tracking information. So you, you when you're, when you get an order, you know, that you're going to fulfill it on the same day. You, you're not waiting to the, the day after, especially on the Facebook marketplace, when you know that you only have two to three days to supply tracking information. So like, um, you know, that, you know, it's always like sitting somewhere in your head. Like I need, this is another thing that I have to do. That I have to take care of today. The more orders you have, the more, let's say annoying it gets. I mean, it, it, it's annoying I mean, for the right reasons, right? You're making profit at the end of the, of the day. So who, who, you know, who are we to complain? But yeah, uh, that's, that's a good problem to have, you know? <laughs> right. Right. We should only have these types of problems. So exactly. Uh, and we talked a little bit about customer service. So you said that um, you, when someone has a problem, they, it's very easy to reach out to you, which is also much different than uh, eBay and Shopify. A lot of customers on other selling platforms, usually they some reach out, but most don't reach out. If there's a problem, they're going to open a case and then you have to start you know, uh, uh, talking to them within that case. And it's not always so practical and you know, not so healthy for your seller account if you got too much of that going on. But uh, but on Facebook Marketplace, it's very easy to, for them to reach out. Usually, they don't reach out to Facebook support. They usually just simply reach out reach out to the seller. So, uh, like you said, they reach out to you. They can see who you are. They're more polite. So you're saying that the handling customer service is just simply much easier on the Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, I I, I think people are more friendly. They they are more understandable. Excuse me. Yep. When when something goes down, when when there's a problem, they usually react uh, better compared to like eBay, for example. They're more so, understanding. Yeah. So it's it's it's. I like that. I like that aspect about uh, Facebook. That um, 
people are more easygoing over there. Good. And that's a good thing to have. I mean, you know, if we can handle our customer service better, it, it just makes our jobs that much easier because nobody likes customers who are annoyed, who are mad because then they're going to make you mad and annoyed. And uh, it, it, it's not uh, easy when most of your customers are always mad all the time. I think um, you just need to put your, your, your yourself in, in their shoes, you know, like try to yeah. think like, what are they thinking? You know, maybe right. they, they were expecting this item because it's a gift for someone's birthday or something. So like, you know, if, if you order an item, because you're going to a birthday party and you want to bring this item and you don't have it on time, you, you're going to be mad too. So just try to think of, of them, try to help them out, you know, be helpful. Don't, don't, don't get angry and you'll be fine. Right. Because at the end of the day, they're your customer. They paid you. Um, they may not know that you're a drop shipper, but you need to handle this like the real business that it is because drop shipping at the end of the day, right. it's a business. Right. But that's a little bit about customer service, which is something very, very, it, it's something that you really need to nail on your dropshipping business. Doesn't matter which selling platform you're selling on, but Facebook marketplace, you have to take care of customer service. And also you should know that after your, after your customers receive their products, Facebook usually sends, or not usually, they always send a survey to the customer and ask, you know, the, the buyer, how was your experience buying from Patrick? Mm -hmm. How fast was the shipping time? Is there anything you'd like to ask? And this is, this is, the, this is the long-term survivability of your Facebook marketplace dropshipping account. So customer service needs to be at the top of the list. Number one, after that product research and the rest of the things, if you ask me, because if you're here for the long term, customer service should always be number one. And I'm glad to yep. hear that it's uh, much easier, much, uh, the customers are much more understanding on Facebook marketplace. Yep. Um, what, uh, let's talk a little bit about softwares. What softwares, you, <laughs> we, when we talked about customer service, you talked about, um, and not customer service, product research. You said that you used uh, some tools to help you with that. Uh, and what other softwares do you use uh, when you are drop shipping um, so, on, on all of your I, selling channels? Yeah, I, I really just use two, 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 two softwares. One is you guys, AutoDS. That's, that's, uh, that's really helpful for eBay. It, right. it helps a lot with like, you know, keeping your items, if they're items out of stock and repricing and all of that, that's, that's great. I, I love your, your program for that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> for phase for Facebook. I, I I'm also, that... I'm also a customer of AutoDS, just so you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I started working in AutoDS, but first I was a customer and even today I'm a customer, you know, if I need help with something, I, I chat with their support, like a regular customer, nobody knows you know, that yeah. I'm the content manager at AutoDS or any of that. And I like it this way because that way I can really check that the system, you know, is always working well. And, you know, nobody's telling me anything because they know who I am or whatever. And that way I can I've, really, I've you know, improve things. I've watched how this company grow in the last year and it's amazing. I, I really like uh, what, what happened to you guys. And, and um, I'm glad that you're growing into, you know, more platform you're expanding so that's that's right. really really re really great um right. so you use the autodesk a little bit for uh ebay and um are you and using use it, it for right facebook now well. for facebook yeah i i started using for facebook as well after so for for the people who are watching i actually spoke to um to autodesk ceo uh leor right Lior. and, and yeah, after after talking to him, uh, he kind of convinced me to to start using it for for Facebook because I wasn't using any software for Facebook before. And when he showed me how it works, when he showed me you know what I can do with it, I started using it. Uh, and I like the fact that you know you get the emails with the repricing. I keep it's kind of like a spreadsheet too because you can put all your items in the uh, in in your program and then you can all track them. You can see what you have if there's right. out of stock. So I love that. But the right. thing that I love the most about Facebook is that um, it allows you to connect it. You can give it to your to your VA, to virtual assistant, and it can start listing items for, for you. It's right. not fully automated, but it's, it's not fully automated. But, it's semi automated. But it's the safe. Same. Yeah. Right. It's semi automated, but and it's safe because you know, I don't want to share my Facebook account with someone that I don't know from a different country. Like Facebook definitely tracks that and definitely can, you know, bring you troubles with that. I, I would like to add to that, that uh, uh, 
the semi-automation that you see today, well, I, I don't know if you know it because we haven't really updated anyone, but our developers are, you know, as soon as we found out about Facebook Marketplace dropshipping, we got our developers on it right away to start, you know, figuring out a way to try to automate this as much as possible today. So the semi-automation today, I agree, it's not the... It's not the most practical way to have it. And that's, I'm going to get to the next point in about half a minute because of the price and stock monitoring where, you know, you're, you're receiving email notifications, which is fine. It's better than nothing. So if one of the price changes or one of the stock changes, you're getting an email and, uh, you know, you open that email and then you have the, the link to your source to see what product they're talking about but you're getting that by adding a note on the product itself on the active listing. So you need to add a note with the URL, with the source's URL, enable uh, price uh, stock uh, notifications and your email address, and then you're getting everything to your email. So if there's a price or stock change, you need to open the email, go to the, click on the link, see what product they're talking about, open that product on Facebook Marketplace and change the price or stock accordingly. So all of that saves you, obviously it saves you time. And, all, and also, you know, you can add the product by simply pasting it and the title moves to uh, the title gets imported to Facebook with all of the images. So you don't have to download them one by one. All of that is nice, but soon we're going to release uh, the actual non-API version. Okay. So you already heard about it. So price yeah. and stock monitoring is going to be automated. It, the prices are going to change on your Facebook store. It's a non-API connection. So, you know, uh, you can feel safe about that if you don't want API connections. And it very much resembles the old non-API connection of eBay where you need to have the extension. It needs to be on, but it's always synchronizing with your stores and it's making the price and stock changes. So that's already another step up that we're going to release uh, sometime soon. Um, I, I heard about it and that's what, what really convinced me to you. That's what really sold me that, that, that feature. Um, so that's that, coming that. and we're always working, like we're always working on, like, you know, we, we're never stopping wherever we never get to a point where we say, okay, we, we got everything we need. Now let's just sit back and relax. Like the developers are always working on the next thing. Facebook marketplace. If you ask me, it's going to continue getting bigger and bigger. We're only in the first six months of people actually trying it out and it's actually working quite well. Uh, so we we've definitely going to keep our eyes more on that. Uh, but I'm glad to see that you're already, you know, into the system and that you are enjoying it. That's um, that's that's what I said. I I've I, I I've started with eBay and I've seen what you guys been a year, just a year ago. Right. And I, I've seen the grow, I've seen the changes, I've seen the improvements, and I see that you guys actually listen to what people are telling you. So right. that's what sold me. That's what that's why I I I like you guys. You know, there's much, a lot of softwares like this out there. Um some more be are more advanced some are less advanced but what really sells me that like you guys listen you guys grow and always improve and it always gets better so uh, i like all the things I, that you I, said I, because I, i'm you. not I, i'm not lying I, I like all the things you said because all of the things that you said and all of your experience that you had on auto ds is exactly the experience that i had the things that i saw and the things that i told lior about his system you know when i uh when i started talking with him so it's yeah, nice to I, see that guys, it's I actually, you know, paid, my experience is other this. people's experience. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get paid to say all of this, guys. This is <laughs> honestly coming from, from my heart. Uh, thank you for, thank you for yeah. clearing the air on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Something else that I wanted to add. Oh, wait, is there something that you wanted to add, by the way, before I move on to the next question? Uh, uh, software. So no. we talked about AutoDS. Uh, are there oh, any other I, software? I, I, I use, yeah, I use one more software. I use, I don't know, Zik Analytics. For, for product, uh, product research, research. Right. yeah so that's another one that i use and those are the only two i use it's our ds and zik analytics yeah to, yeah to zik analytics items. is also great by uh nar geva also uh, a great guy he knows what he's doing he did a really great job on that project and it's still running really really well uh it also mm -hmm. helped me when i was uh when i was more in the beginning uh, of my journey but i definitely remember using zik analytics it helped me get a good start on what products are actually selling for drop shippers and what categories you should be looking at uh, and not just, you know, shoot for random products that some don't even relate to drop shipping at all. So it's right. definitely something that drop shippers need to use, especially those in the beginning that don't, uh, that are not really familiar with the product line and all the right categories for drop shipping, which is not every category, but there is more than enough. And to learn them, yeah, 
starting with tools like Zik definitely helps. So uh, that's a little bit about the software. Um, how high are you sca- planning on scaling this business model? Like how high, how how do you think you can make it keeping it as a side hustle we're not talking about full income source anymore okay how high do well, you think maybe, you can go? I, I don't know what what would what's the end goal here but I, I really have an end goal but i would like to scale it up for sure my, my, my problem is as, as i mentioned earlier is uh, trying to figure out hiring process with VA. I'm, I'm slowly getting there i'm slowly yep. trying to hiring people i i've i had few they didn't really work out, but uh, I found someone new. I want to see how it goes. If I see that this person can do it, maybe I'll grow even more and more. That's one of the great so, things about having a business. You're hiring workers. You're firing the first few until you both learn how to make it work. I definitely want to grow it. I definitely want to get bigger and and you know as big as it can. Maybe turn it into like a full time income. You know, the VA is the way uh, to go. The VA is definitely yeah. the way to go. Let, let me tell you, when I when I started dropshipping and I knew that I can scale my business even more with, let's say, I was already connected to AutoDS with price and stock monitoring, for, but I wasn't, I wasn't in order automation right away. And that's one of the things that people were always telling me, listen, you, you have to do it. Like once you do it, you won't be able to, you know, go back to the old method of doing it yourself doing each or you know fulfilling each order by yourself and i was like yeah but what if there's mistakes and what if there are bugs and what if i can't find my money or i don't know i i kept finding every reason why not to and once i actually did it because i also felt like i had no choice because it was like a bad era when amazon was closing down accounts with gift card usage and all of that and i felt like i was getting lost and the only way to fulfill my amazon orders is by using order automation not using my own accounts and once i started doing that uh, I thought that I was profiting well with gift cards because I was buying, you know, $100 gift cards and paying, you know, $75 for them. So I thought that my profits were high then, but after I ordered, I, after I added in the order automation, I was just simply able to scale and get much more orders per day. And I was not touching them at all. So I was really, really able to scale that way. And that's just for order automation. I'm not talking about VAs who are import- adding the products for you, optimizing the titles and all of that. I'm st- I was still doing all of that. But o- just the order automation did so much. So I can only imagine how much when you get a VA, how much a, a VA that's actually doing the work well for you, how much you're actually going to benefit from that. I mean, you are this definitely going to benefit from it and you won't be able to look back. You won't be able to, to go back to doing it yourself after that. This is why I love talking to people like you because you guys motivate me. You know, it's it's good to stay in touch with other dropshippers, especially the ones that are already like successful, because yep. it makes you motivated. And you know, if you have a question, you can answer. You can ask a question, and uh, yeah, I appreciate yep. the advice. I appreciate sure, the sure. advice, and 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 uh, you know, this is definitely something that I'm currently looking into it. And work um, slow and hard at it. It's like product research. Yeah, you need to work slow and hard. And uh, a VA is—it's a real person at the end of the day. So you know, we you know we yeah. do a good job. Make sure to give a little bonus and things like that. They'll want to give you more. Um, yeah. But yeah. By the way, if uh, I don't know what you're looking for for VAs, there's many places to look for VAs like Fiverr and more places like that. But uh, we also have a post on our community page. Uh, we have hundreds of VAs who posted there. You know, people who are VAs and people who are also know. looking for VAs. Yeah. I'll send you the link after this uh, uh, interview. So post yeah, there that you're looking I, I for a VA look and you'll get it. a lot of submissions. Um, Thank you. Before we wrap this up, is there any tip that you would like to give to beginners? And I'm talking really about people who are in the beginning of their journey and they're asking all of the questions that you asked in the beginning before you got started. Any real nice hard tips that you can give uh, beginner dropshippers like we talked about customer service? So something to really uh, think about all the questions that you had in the beginning. We talked about customer service. We talked about taxes, which is two things that people usually ask a lot in the beginning. But if there's anything else that you can think of, anything that we didn't talk about, any tip that you would like to give beginners? I think just start it. When I starting out, I remember I had a lot of doubts. Like, for example, I was wondering what's going to happen if, you know, uh, I sell item on eBay and, and I get... And I use Walmart as a supplier and they, they, they get the box and it says Walmart. What right. are they going to think? Are they going to yeah. be mad? So many questions about uh, that from beginners. Yeah. 
Right. And then taxes, how I'm going to pay them or, uh, you know, how I'm going to, how do I fulfill orders? How do I handle an angry customer? Those are doubts. You're going to have them. And I still have them. Like you see, I have doubts with the VA, for example. You're always going to have them. But just start, try it out, learn the process. You're going to learn, you know, um, on the way. And I think that's that's the biggest tip. Just just start doing it. Just try it. Right. You, you might lose money at the beginning. Hey, whatever. You lost a few bucks, but you learn how to do it. You learn, you know, right. what are the steps. Right. So that would be the, first, the, the biggest tip I can give you. Another big tip I, I think I already mentioned is start keeping track of everything from the beginning. So, um, you, you know, you can, you can get a spreadsheet on Google or something or an Excel with the profits and, and items. You can use AutoDS to post items and, and track, uh, um, track the list of your items and, and the links to your suppliers, as, as you said in the notes. So um, that's another big tip. And in the new update, um, uh, sorry for stopping you real quick, but in the new update that, that I just talked about, um, so we're already going to have the price and stock monitoring and um, uh, you won't have to go to the notes to get to your suppliers page. You can also, you know, one click from the, from AutoDS to get to your supplier. So we already fixed that. Uh, order automation is something that better. we started working on, but that's gonna, I don't know how much time that's going to take. Uh, yeah, that's just something that's that I wanted better. to add uh, regarding that. And regarding your first tip, I definitely agree that you need to dive in in order to see, you know, to, to you have to get your hands dirty. You can't just, you know, think about all the reasons why you shouldn't or all the questions that are blocking you from doing it. And, um, you know, you can't just watch more and more and more YouTube videos because at the end of the day, the information is just going to be scattered all over your head. You need to dive in and right, get to it, but you do need to have knowledge. I mean, don't get to a point where you're uploading a product, it sells, and now you don't know what to do. So you need to learn about the basic steps, but then do go ahead and jump right in for sure. That's the best way yep. to, to start. Yep. Uh, okay, great tips. And I want to leave off just by saying that just for doing it, you know, for five, six months, you're already profiting around $2,500 to $3,000 a month. That's a dream for a lot of people who are in the beginning of their journey. A lot of people who are starting today, they don't mind to even make $1,000 profit within six months from now. So just, you know, to where you get to the point where you're making 2.5, 3K a month in clean profit, you know, after your expenses is great. It also shows the potential of the Facebook marketplace and what happens when you're going to, when you're going to add in more suppliers, what's going to happen once you add a good VA who knows how to take care of your tasks, pay him whatever he deserves, but you are still definitely going to enjoy, you know, the amount that you can make and how much you can scale further and further and further each month. So, um, great tips. I enjoyed having this interview with, uh, this interview with you, Patrick. I hope it was uh, beneficial for you too. Um, I'm going Likewise. to leave a link to your YouTube channel. So if you guys want more dropshipping tips, more dropshipping strategies, it's going to be right below this video. Uh, for us, don't forget to subscribe, you know, to share this video so that your friends and family can also learn about the amazing and wonderful world of dropshipping. And um, yeah, Patrick, anything else you'd like to end off with? Um, just, just start doing it and keep listing, you know, keep listing <laughs> for sure. Don't, don't be afraid to begin guys. People do it every day. And you know, those who jump in are usually those that succeed at the end of the day. And we're always here. We're always going to give out, you know, more interviews, more videos, product finding suppliers, marketplaces. We're always working more and more. And we're always listening to you guys. If you guys have any feedback, any features that you want to see on autos, yes, let us know. We will listen just as, just as we've been doing for the last uh, few years. And that's it. I really hope that you guys are going to start with this wonderful, wonderful platform. Patrick, thank you very, very much for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It was really nice. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Take care.